And then you go on the social platform where Facebook's like, well, if it's not 100% true 100% of the time for 100% of the people, you can't say it. And so how do you bridge social behavior and understanding how people operate on a social platform with traditional direct response advertising, bringing those two things together? And I think that probably is what we, what I try to take claim for. It's, it's how do you merge those things together? Because when you can, that's when you start to see some really great results. top lead generators known as the highest ROI lead generator in the world. He's built an amazing agency, an amazing consultancy, and he's built a personal brand that's just all about helping businesses drive amazing, consistent, scalable, profitable results uh, using Facebook ads. Welcome to the Robust Marketer Livecast today, Nicholas. How are you doing? Oh, very good. Thank you. That, uh, that uh, intro was fantastic. Makes me sound better than I am. Well, thank you. well, you're well, you're in Toronto, right? I am. Yeah, very cool. I'm from Cambridge, so I'm, I'm familiar with the Southern Ontario. Oh, beautiful. Well, we're getting hit pretty hard right now with a nasty snowstorm. So hopefully that passes soon. I love to brag uh, because it's ten degrees outside here on the other side of the country. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Nice. <laughs> hey Tim, I think you may want to if, if you can mute. I think you probably got a little sound going on there. If you want to mute that. Um, we can get rid of that feedback, but we, this is an actual live cast today. So guys, if, if you're on the ad buyers group and you're on ad leaks, if you have any questions that you want to have Nick answer, uh, feel free yeah. to throw them in the questions below and we can uh, get to them a little bit later. We should start by saying, uh, the, you know, one of the main reasons for this talk is that Nick is going to be at Facebook and e-commerce mastery live in San Diego, uh, as one of our headlining speakers. So I'm super excited about that. Um, but Nick, why don't we start? So I'll, I'll give a little Genesis as well too, because it's funny. I, I've had multiple requests for content from, you know, we've been doing this for now two years now and I've had multiple people come up being like, Oh, can you get Nick Kuzmich? Can you get, you know, so you've got ah. this great <laughs> reputation. It's, seriously. It's it, yeah. Like it was, and, you know, when I reached out this time, I'm like, okay, we got to, got to see if we can get it. We've had so many requests. So maybe it's better um, that I stay away and just let the mystery of the reputation just carry forth. I like, well, no too late. You're, you're in it to win it now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so why don't you give uh, your hero's journey in a nutshell, how you got started and, and to, to what it's kind of blossomed into today? Yeah, no, I, 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 I wish I could take like some level of credit for what's happened, but I feel like uh, a good deal of it has just been uh, a little bit of luck, a lot of bit of like the, the stars aligning and, and everything working out that way. What I mean by that is I was just I kind of in the right place at the right time. I had uh, listened to the gurus and I had started my own information product. This is going back 10 plus years ago. Um, and then I was told, hey, I need to, you can have the best product in the world, but if you don't have eyeballs who are actually like looking at it and transacting with you, then the product's all for naught. So I said, well, then my next step should be figuring out how to get eyeballs on this thing. And uh, I was just too late to the Google AdWords game. And that was where, that was the 800 pound gorilla. Everybody was playing on Google AdWords, but this had just been after like their second slap you know, with their animal based name slaps. And I just yep. saw people go out of business like literally overnight. So I said, shoot, I don't want to, I don't want to play in that game. You know, let's, let's find another way to drive eyeballs to what I wanted to do. Again, perfect, perfect luck had it that I was in the right place at the right time. Facebook had just released their ad platform in beta, uh, as did, interestingly enough, plenty of fish. And uh, so I dove in both ad platforms and very quickly did I recognize that Facebook was going to go up. Plenty of fish I just didn't know. So I said, I, I now look back on it in hindsight, but I made the multi-million dollar decision to dive two feet in and say, I'm going to figure out this Facebook advertising platform and make it work. So I dove two feet in. And back then, if I don't know if anyone who's watching or listening remembers back then, but it was the wild, wild west. You could say anything you want. You could do anything you want and get away with it on Facebook, the good old days. Um, and so literally, like I was making profits right from day one. Now, we're not talking millions and millions and millions of dollars, but I was spending a dollar and I was making a dollar fifty. And that's to me a good day. Uh, it's, it's still a good day for that matter. But it was just working, but I figured that everybody else was making it work because it just seemed too easy. And I would get into these conversations with people and say, they say, what do you do? Well, I have this course that I'm selling via Facebook ads. And they're like, oh, you're making Facebook ads work? And I'm like, yeah, you're not. And it started to realize that 
maybe I just got lucky or maybe it was all my years cutting my teeth with direct response advertising and learning from the legends that it was all kind of coming together. And then very specifically, and this is kind of the, where it all began, I was sitting in an event and the guy at the front of the room basically said, how many people in here are using Facebook ads to grow their business? And about 80% of the hands went up. And the second question was, well, of everyone who's doing this, how many have found it to be profitable for you? And every hand except mine went down. And then something sort of clicked in the back of my head that said, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing. This is the thing. Uh, so again, went two feet in. Um, we started selling a lot. People started coming to us and saying, hey, can you help us sell a lot? And I said, I don't know, but let's try. And that comes the birth of the consultancy. And then after a little bit of that, people started saying, well, we don't really want you to tell us what to do. Can you just do it for us? And again, I said, well, I don't really know, but let's give it a try. And that was the birth of the agency. Um, and now this is going back to 2008 or so, 2009. It's kind of when things started to pick up. Uh, and I guess the rest, as they say, is history. Now we've been fortunate enough to work with some very big names, with some great clients, some that most people have heard of and others who no one will ever hear of. Um, just doing high volume e-commerce stuff on one end, very doing high ticket, high margin, low volume stuff on the other end and everything in between. And again, we just got, we got lucky. We had first movers advantage. We, we jumped on the platform very early and now, uh, things are going fairly well. I think, uh, yeah, I think, you know, what stands out to me about, about the, the cause for your success was probably that just the, the basics of direct response marketing and having enough technical chops to overcome some of those early hurdles around tracking with Facebook right. uh, and some of those other things, just understanding how to pull the levers well enough and then having that background in old school marketing that just works no matter what medium you're in. I, I would imagine that that could be a good reason for it. Yeah, that was a big part. And I think what what the funny part is, is is how do you merge this or, or marry this relationship between traditional direct response marketing and social advertising? Because I'd say 99% of the people who lost their ad accounts in 2016, 17, and 18, when like ad accounts were just being shut down by the masses, were the traditional direct response marketer because – when you did old school direct response marketing, you could say almost anything. Like the goal was, how do you have the most like clickbaitish headline in the world, um, whether it was true or not? Like that was what you were taught. Like peak curiosity had this huge like claim of a headline that got people to continue. And so this is what I was brought up in. And then you go on the social platform where Facebook's like, well, if it's not 100% true, 100% of the time for 100% of the people, you can't say it. And so how do you bridge social behavior and understanding how people operate on a social platform with traditional direct response advertising, bringing those two things together? And I think that probably is what we, what I try to take claim for. It's, it's how do you merge those things together? Because when you can, that's when you start to see some really great results. Very cool. We have Evan Stevens, who is one of the guys who requested that I get Nick Kuzmich say, here is Nick Kuzmich. I've been dreaming of this for years. So, oh, Evan, well, I, I, well, I hope you're going to be there in San Diego then, so we can shake hands and, and officially meet. That's awesome. Yeah, we're making just making dreams happen here, Nick. Just, just so that's, you know, that's that's what it's all about, right? It's, it's we're all in business for that. So, your agency then it is multifaceted, as you say. I kind of I've always thought of you as the lead generation guy, yeah. um, but you're saying you're also handling high volume e-commerce. You're also doing info. It sounds like you're helping people with their sort of info backend, their info funnels. Um, as well as lead generation, like break down the, your focus as a business operator now, like where are you most engaged? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And the answer is all over the place, unfortunately. If I were to redo this whole thing, and like some of our, my greatest students are the people who really niche and niche down very specifically. So I have one guy in our in our one of our membership programs who like is the ads guy for real estate agents, and he's making a killing, right? I have another guy who's the real estate, who's the uh, ad guy for financial advisors. And literally, he just spoke at an event, God, I think it was last week. And he closed 102 retainer clients at 6K a month. He just built an eight million, six to eight million dollar business with one talk, which was wicked. Me, on the other hand, was like, let's start in the information space. And so we started working with big names like the Tony Robbins of the world and the Joe Polishes and the Deepak Chopras and like the the uh, um, oh god, names are uh, Harveckers of the world. And like that was our intro. It was like this information thought leader person. Um, with a heavy emphasis on lead generation that ended up selling information products. 
And then after doing that for years and getting extremely high ROIs, um, that moved and segued into people who sold really high ticket stuff. So like consulting or $25,000 plus dollar masterminds, we were selling $100,000 masterminds, um, million dollar like B2B consulting engagements, that sort of thing. And I was like, that's really easy because if you're selling a, a hundred thousand dollar mastermind you don't really need all that great facebook chops because the margins are so big that you can almost trip over it if you have a half a sense of what you're doing and so i then i was like well i really need a challenge here like what's the opposite of that and that was like low ticket high volume e-commerce so then we moved into that space and said let's see if we could sell 29 49 69 dollar supplements for example at ultra high volumes where you need like 3,000 units moved a day, and now you don't have high profit margins. You really need to make the thing work. And so I think it was uh, right now, my attention is on the agency side anyways, focused with our higher level clients. And uh, that spans the board between high volume e-commerce, uh, people are spelling, spending a million dollars or more a month on Facebook, um, high, high level kind of mastermind type stuff, and then traditional front end lead generation that can lead you to all sorts of stuff. So on the agency side, that's really where my focus is on. It doesn't really matter what the type is. It's the, the higher level clients who have fairly big spends right now. Which makes sense. Now, with with the high volume, lower ticket e-commerce stuff, how much it's got to be sort of a holistic consultation, I imagine, where you're talking about bringing people in the front door as much as possible. But right. with that kind of thing, you have to be making money with like the, what I call the invisible architecture, right? Which is the, the email, the the list, the, the CRM, like how much of your consulting focuses on helping people uh, go throughout that process and make sure that their business is sound when it comes to making the most of every sale that you bring in? Yeah, that's such a great question because I, I tell people all the time, you don't have a traffic problem. Like I hear all the time, like, oh, if I could just get more traffic, I could just get more traffic, everything would be solved. The reality is traffic, you don't have a traffic problem because you could go to the eyeball store and purchase eyeballs today. And anyone with half a sense of what they're doing has a little bit clarity on who their target market is and has decent, like basic one-on-one copywriting skills. You could go to the traffic store, AKA Facebook, push like nine buttons and you'll get traffic tomorrow. Heck, you could get traffic in a couple hours, right? Um, you don't have a traffic problem. Most people have what I would call in our industry, a funnel problem, or in my case, I call it a process problem. It's, it's not necessarily getting the eyeballs, but it's how do you take the most advantage of those eyeballs? So front end, how do we self liquidate or how are we profitable on day one? But that's just the beginning of the journey, right? How do we then increase AOV? So how do we increase the average order value with what I call bumps or bundles or recurring either way? And then post purchase, how do you increase lifetime value of the customer using multi-channel? So using email, using push notifications, heck, using direct mail, which I have found to be one of the best back end channels that exist on the planet. So when anyone thinks of new client, new customer acquisition, and, and this is where we spend our agency time running traffic, but we spend our consulting time looking at the full spectrum of the process, because frankly, traffic is not going to solve anybody's problem. It's when you have that process in place, traffic is going to enhance what's already working, or it'll destroy your business because you're going to spend all your money on ads and not actually see a return. So I think business owners have to definitely holistically see multi-channel um, increase of revenue or lifetime value of, 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 of the client. And what are the steps and the multiple touch points you need to make to ensure that your only transaction with somebody is not on their initial transaction with you, but it's what happens over, over time. And that's where you start to see real return on investment. That's where you're not just have a hobby project. Now you're building a real business. And I think that's where some people might miss it. And finding that rhythm in that process to where you're adding value and making sales pitches and things like that. So you can't just be hitting people all the time with offer, 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 right? You've got to find the right sort of frequency and cadence that, that produces the, you know, the, the best results long term. I'm so glad you brought that up because I mean, I think, and, and this is just me and people have proven me wrong. So this is not like a, a, a hard fact that everyone should adhere to, but if you could, it'd be good for you. Um, I think there's no greater sales process than actually delivering goodwill to your marketplace, both on the acquisition side where someone has not yet transacted with you 
or to the customer side where someone is a client of yours. But there's no other greater sales tool than offering goodwill and helping people rather than just telling them you're going to help them. And so you're right. Um, you know, if you follow any of the stuff that we do or any of the people who work very closely with us, it is not about um, pounding offers because you could burn out a list very easily. You could piss off customers very easily. Um, and that's why a lot of our front end customer acquisition stuff is not in fact, hey, come buy my stuff. It's, hey, let's generate a lead because a lead, and here's another kind of takeaway that some people might need to realize is that a lead is an appreciating asset over time. It's like real estate um, in the right market. So a lead that I acquired today is not going to be worth the same as someone who's been a lead in my world for three years now. Okay, so that same lead, just with time playing a factor and me providing goodwill to that lead, is going to be worth five, 10, 20 times more over time to me. Whereas if you're just going for like a short shot transaction right out of the gate, you either hit or you miss. You either make the sale or you don't. And so that's why I put such a heavy emphasis on lead generation because whether you're selling information, whether you have a, a, a virtual thing, whether it's a physical practice like your doctor, lawyer, chiropractor, whether you're selling high ticket or low ticket or even selling e-commerce products, um, to me, there is no more valuable asset and there's no better use for Facebook than to – extend your virtual hand forward and say, nice to meet you, AKA lead generation, bring somebody into your world. And then from there, you can go multi-channel. From there, you can increase value. From there, you're not just hammering people, but you're providing value all along the way, which then obviously leads to greater transactional value. I, I'll say one more thing to prove this point. Every time we do some higher ticket stuff in, in my world, um, whether it's our two day intensive or it's like one of our mastermind clients, I always ask at the beginning of it, how many of you have been in my world longer than a year? Majority of the hands go up. How long have you been in my world for longer than two years? Majority of the hands stay up. And then three years and four years and some of the hands start to go down. But the case in point is my highest value lifetime, you know, value of a client is someone who's been in my world for a long, long time. And if all I did was say, hey, come buy my stuff right now. And that was the entirety of my marketing campaign. Um, I probably wouldn't be in business today. So just just the idea that it has to go beyond an immediate transactional conversation. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I I've been when you were recounting your your story um, and and the years that you've been in this, I've been in the game around that long as well. I came up nice. from an affiliate marketing company called Neverblue, right. which was a Victoria a Victoria icon uh, out here. But but again, mm -hmm. the marketing at that time was entirely focused on instant trends. As an affiliate, you're just you don't own sure. the lead, you don't own right. the sales, but you're just all sure. about arbitraging that sale. But I'm really interested in techniques that people are using now. And this is something I see coming up more and more where mm. you're using lead generation for, and what I, I haven't seen a great example of it yet, or I can't think of a, maybe a great example of like, you know, a, a lot of people do the discount, you know, sp enter your email, spin the wheel, get the discount kind sure. of thing. Like that's the entry level sure. thing. What are some other tactical things that e-commerce advertisers, for instance, can do in order to get that lead up front? Yeah, no, I love that. And and so I have what I call the lead magnet desirability matrix. And, and I'll probably share this when we're together uh, in San Diego, but I'll give you just kind of a higher level overview. We kind of viewed everything that you can potentially offer as a lead magnet um, to see what creates the highest level of transaction, has the highest desire and the highest value versus what doesn't. And like if we were to rewind 10 years from now and I said like uh, 10 years ago, and said what was the best lead magnet you could offer? Most people would be like an ebook. Like that was the thing. You just offer a lead book, you capture a name and an email address. And frankly, and we take this poll all the time, most people who download ebooks don't read them, period, right? Nor do they want them anymore, right? And then so you have in our information world, people offering webinars and video sales letters and discounts and coupons and all the rest of this. I'll just kind of cut to it. We have tested everything humanly possible known to generate a quality lead. Now you can create a shitty lead with like a quiz mm -hmm. or some sort of a giveaway. Um, but that doesn't mean, you know, generating leads is one thing. Quality leads that convert is another thing. Um, but we have found that the highest quality lead is somebody who is transacting with you, giving you their name or their email address in return for some sort of valuable information that can move their 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 situation forward towards a desired outcome. So I'll give you an example. Usually that means a one to two page PDF of sorts. Okay. 
um, that is actionable, implementable, high consumption rate and bring someone closer. So one of our clients sells a topical melatonin spray. So it's an e-commerce product is a physical product and they have all this research and they say melatonin ingested internally is bad on your liver, sprayed onto certain parts of your neck doesn't is not so hard on your body and it's a perfect way to like get the sleep you need. Um, so we could have, and we did when we started, when they came to us, they were running ads direct to sales page that said, come get our melatonin spray, yada, yada, yada. Uh, they were doing okay. Oftentimes they were profitable. Most times they were breaking even. Um, most uh, other times they were at a loss. And they said, Nick, if you were going to redo this, what would you do? And I said, well, let's reverse engineer this as a lead generation play. And so step number one was what type of PDF could we give to someone who is interested in a melatonin spray, i.e. they are not sleeping at night, right? So what can we provide them in a short, actionable, downloadable one to two page PDF that could help them do that. Now we came up with, and I can't get into the specifics of this, but we came up with essentially a one page checklist of the seven things that someone can do to immediately start sleeping better tonight, nice. right? So highly targeted to the exact person who are our, our ideal 4%, and we call them a 4%er, someone who's gonna spend the most money with us and be a long-term client. We put that in front of them, no mention of the product, no mention of anything. In other words, let's just provide value to this individual first. Now, whenever somebody is, comes into our world as a lead, they're going to fit in one to three categories. Category number one is I'm ready to take an action now, take my money now, give me whatever the hell you've got. And there's a good number of those people. Second is I kind of like what you have, but I'm a traditional buyer who needs seven to 12 touch points before I make a transactional decision. That's what our whole industry around funnels is. And then the third is those people who are not ready to buy now, but they will when the time is right. And the reality is majority of the people sit into that category, okay? And so we can't ignore them as bad leads or dead leads. We have to recognize that their time is just not now. And there's only two times to do a transaction, now or not now. And that person's not now will eventually turn into a now if you treat them really well. So the case in point here is with this particular client, we did uh, a checklist, help, sleep, help yourself sleep better tonight immediately. And immediately after that person downloaded that checklist, they filled out their name and the email on a lead generation page. The thank you page is what we call a GFO or a godfather offer. This is how do we appeal to the fast mover who's ready to take an action now? How can we give them a irresistible offer for them to transact? And so we do that, and there's a bunch of ways you can do that. We'll talk about that when they were together in San Diego. But um, this then made an immediate offer directly of their product to that person right away. We had up to 17% cold traffic people take them up on that offer on a good day. On a bad day, it was more like 3 or 4%. But either way, it was profitable from day one. Now, if that were just the end of the story, brilliant. We're profitable and we have volume and it can work, but we don't end there, right? We realize that there's medium buyers and there's slow buyers. So there's a continual drip nurture sequence and a funnel sequence that increased that conversion rate over time. But the case in point is typically if you're selling a physical product, it's most likely appealing to some sort of need that somebody has. Nobody ever buys the thing because they want the thing. They buy the thing because they want a desired outcome. In fact, I'll go as far to say is they don't even want the outcome. They want the feeling that the outcome gives them. Mm -hmm. So if they're buying a dash cam, they're buying a dash cam because they feel they want the security of knowing that if shit were to hit the fan and I were to get in a car accident, I have this whole thing captured. I'm not legally liable. They want that feeling. They, nobody wants the dash cam, right? So watches at Christmas, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So if that's the case, all you got to do is reverse engineer the fact that I have a product, I have a widget, I have whatever I do. What is the thing that, or the reason why someone would want this? What would it make them feel if they had this? Okay. At one point we were selling flashlights, like these tactical flashlights. Yep. In fact, well, I was, I was right there. I was going to get it. It's a, you know, everyone sees the survival. Yeah, yeah. The survival tactical flashlights. I mean, so the reality is nobody wanted a flashlight, but if you read our ad copy, it started from the perspective of like, have you ever found yourself in a dark alley wishing you could light it up so you could like walk safely down something like that. Right. Um, it was the safety. It was the feeling of being secure. It was the fact like, all that kind of stuff, which then led to a lead magnet, which then says, led to selling millions and millions of these damn, you know, 1,000 lumen count flashlights. 
So any anybody who's in e-commerce should be thinking about if well, I'll put it this way and we'll move on. If all you're doing is going for the initial transaction, add to product, can you make it work? Maybe, maybe not. We've seen some people make it work. We've seen others that, that haven't make it at work. But if you realize that people fit into three categories and that your most valuable asset is not the transaction, it's the lead for what that lead is worth to you over time. Now, all of a sudden, you have this opportunity to generate a lead, make an immediate sale. So you're at least self-liquidating and being profitable right out of the gates. And you have two other potential buyers who over time are just going to add to your LTV. Now we're talking about a real business that, that can be extended over time. I love it. And I, you know, I've often talked about the, the, out or the, um, basically the idea that people don't want a, a, a drill bit or a drill. They want a, a two inch hole. They want a hole. Yes. But, but you're taking it a step further, which is, and I don't, I won't, I will stop this analogy because it could get weird, but they want the feeling that they get. <laughs> From the two, Why you know, would they want that yeah, two exactly. inch hole, Eric? I don't know. What are they looking at, or what's coming through there? Yeah, exactly. But, but it's the point. It, it's yeah. it's very much the point. Like Neil Patel said, uh, nobody wants a mattress; they want a better night's sleep. But they don't just want the better night's sleep; they want the energy to play with their kids and to feel great and all that kind of stuff. We transact based on how we perceive we will feel by making that transactional decision, and if we just remember that. Now, all of a sudden, all of our ad communication, all of our videos and images, like everything that we are using to communicate to our ideal prospect, will start to hit home much better than this just average, boring talk of, hey, do you want a flashlight that's really bright? I, I mean, when it comes to the community too, like, because you know, I, I have a, uh, Alex Brown from the Beard Club um, spoke at our, at our last event, and he talks a lot about building your tribe. And if you can get to that underlying reason that people are buying the products, which in his case was, like the underlying thing was like self care for men, which is like you're sure. worth being take, you know, taken care of. And sure. once you have that central thing that's behind the product that you have, it's easier to create community around it. Like when it comes to those non transactional emails that you might be sending or things where you're, and if you can connect to that impulse that, that everyone connects to, then you have that as a potential to build a community as well, which will only help in increase the lifetime conversion as well. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, people are looking to be a part of communities or movements. Um, and now not every product granted is, is fulfilling of a, a community or a movement. Um, but if, if you, if you have this realization that like at the very core of how people are, um, they are looking to belong and they're part, they're looking to be a part of something bigger than themselves that can easily be somehow worked into the delivery of your actual, you know, product or service. So let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, you mentioned melatonin as a, as a potential product. And so one of the things I'm interested in is how, especially once you get to a certain level, Level, how are you selective about the kinds of products, the kinds of projects that you take on? I like melatonin because everyone sleeps. And it's funny, I Greta sure. Van Real spoke about my, my event in Europe and she was talking about she was getting into the sleep space as well because it's sort of this, un, you know, it, it's it's just, it's becoming on vogue, I think, uh, because everyone does it and, and there are these implements sure. with it. So sleep is a big yeah. one. I think CBD is interesting. All interesting if you if you're tackling the can and you know we can maybe get to this in a bit but I, if you've thought of tackling cannabis in any way and and whether there's a, a play for that in, in what we're doing but how do you how do you pick the kinds of clients you want to work with is it topic is it sort of based on how much you can buy into what what their product is or, or how do you do that yeah that's a great question and and with regards to cbd as well i mean there there's uh, specifically for facebook there's some ramifications around what you can and cannot do cbd is still uh, consider a cannabis product, and because it's cannabis product, it is banned on Facebook, which is doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means you need to have a side door approach, uh, which we what we do for weight loss and what we do for dating and what we do for cannabis type stuff. Um, but one of our biggest, you know, cannabis things was working with uh, a company called the Sacred Plant. Um, I've seen your ads. I wondered how you got those through. Well. Because you never mentioned cannabis, right? So you refer to a name and you have a plant that you can kind of tell what the shape of the damn thing is. But as long as you're not using blatant, this is cannabis, and you're not making any claims about what the plant can do, um, we call that a side door approach, right? So in the weight loss space, it's like going through the metabolism or inflammation angle versus like, hey, lose a bunch of pounds kind of thing or taking a ketogenic approach. But Back to the question, like how do we determine who we work with? Is on, and this is the agency level. So our consulting side, our consulting information is one business and our agency is another business. So they're treated very differently in our approaches and, and who we work with. But on the agency side, frankly, um, we've, we've, you know, knock on wood, gotten to this place now where um, 
we have a long waiting list. Uh, we vet everybody that we work with and we go in on a performance basis. So there's no retainers. There's no percentage of ad spend. Um, we get a piece of the pie that we bring to the table. And so everybody wins. Now, in order for that to happen, it means that by the time you come to us, you have to prove that you have, like we talked about at the beginning of this conversation, a process that actually works. So irregardless of industry, irregardless of topic matter or what the product is, I need to dive into your numbers, both on Facebook and in your financials to see, do you actually have a profitable business that has any legs to it? Um, if the answer is yes, and I think that's part of the benefit that we have now is like we position ourselves as a scaling agency because most people who come to us at this point are people who are like, I'm spending you know, $300,000 a month. I want to be spending $900,000 a month and we can't do it on our own. Can you help us? So frankly, if somebody comes to us who's spending $300,000 a month on ads, it means they've got their stuff together. Otherwise, there's no way they could have been doing that for a year. Um, so the short of it for us, fortunately, in, in this place, is uh, we look at the process. Does it work? Are they profitable for how long? Have they made Facebook ads work in the past? And are they really looking for having someone to come in and scale what they do? If the answer is yes, then we'll most likely take them on. Um, on the other side of it, there is a division of our agency who actually buys into businesses. We buy equity stake into the business, which incentivizes to even work that much harder because now I own a piece of the business. I want to see this thing take off. And in that case, we're a, a little more particular. So I want to make sure that this company has a product, like you said, like sleep. Um, you know, one of the companies that we work with right now is a probiotic company. Um, I mean, gut health and health in general is not going anywhere anytime soon. They have a very unique line, for example, that that has different stages of probiotics from birth all the way to adult, which no other company has. Um, so I'll be looking at potential market cap uh, and reach and current trends for you know considering buying into a company like that and and seeing if we can make it grow that way. Very cool. So you mentioned this earlier. I wanted to get back to it a little bit because I thought it was interesting. Um, if you know, there's a lot of people in our audience who are building agencies. You know, they maybe they started as affiliates. They might have their own Shopify stores as well, sure. but they're realizing that they're able to generate expertise enough with social media and social media ads enough to, to start offering it as a service. If you were starting it over, you know, yeah. how because you, you have so many different approaches. Like you have you have the you know you go in and you'll teach. Uh, you know, take real estate agents for an example. You'll go in and you'll teach real estate agents. You'll teach them a seminar for how to do this themselves. Um, right. But like, would you do that, or would you build an agency that that actually just gets ag real estate agents and real estate agencies as clients? Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. How do you parse that? Yeah, it's such a great question, and and I think the two only like takeaways I could say if I were to do it all over again is one. Uh, now. Keep in mind, what I've done has served me very well, and I wouldn't necessarily go back again. But if I were to teach someone who's just getting started, which we do with a lot of the people who are in our groups, um, I'd say, number one, get niche specific. Now, I don't care what the niche is. And I'm not one of those who like, you have to love the niche or like, you need a history. Then I don't care about any of that. But I would say get niche specific. Uh, the only reason that that um, one of our members can take on 102 retainer, uh, 112 retainer clients overnight is because they're working with financial advisors who they have a system, like an ad system built out for. So because they have a system uh, that they that's built out for, they can literally just replicate the process. If all you do is work with gyms, or if all you do is work with health-based clients that are in the the you know omega fats industry, it doesn't. You don't have to do all that much extra market research. You don't have to do any extra things. You know what works in the industry, and you can roll with it. So the first thing I would say is get niche specific and just own the niche because then. So way less work on you and you can kind of serve your people well and build up a name much faster as being the financial advisor guy or the real estate guy. Um, then secondly, you would want to um, think about the model that you want to have. Like you prefer teaching or you prefer doing. Um, the good part about doing, let's say, an agency model is there's many different pricing models. Like you do percentage of ad spend. You could do flat retainer fee. You could do performance-based. And so I'm always looking for ways to say, how can I take 
what I say I'm good at and leverage it for even more revenue than if I was doing something else. So retainer client stuff is okay, but it means that you can only be capped at X number of clients um, before you burn yourself out or have to bring on team or staff and grow it that way. Uh, if you do performance-based, it ensures that, A, you better be damn good at what you do. But secondly, one client could be the equivalent of four or five or six clients worth of revenue if you took a different model. So you just want to think like, what do I enjoy doing? Um, I started in the agency space and then I realized I really love like talking to people and I really love getting in front and teaching. And so that's why we started the consulting side of things. Frankly, in, in full transparency, consulting is easier because there's no accountability. Like you teach the thing and you say, go do it. And if they don't do it, that's on them. That's not on me. Agency work, it's on me. Like if, and, and that's why, and look, I don't, I love everybody in my industry. I don't have any enemies in my industry. I try to be friends with everybody else who's an agency, but there's this huge trend now of agencies turned consultants. And I think the reason for that is because most of them either don't have the chops anymore, or they can't handle the pressure of being on the line for doing the work. So consultancy or teaching is the best other way to go. And I think that's a reason why I'll never drop my agency because if I'm going to teach, then I have to be in the trenches. There's no way I could teach and consult if I'm not daily in the trenches. And so I think it's a nice, it's a nice blend that way. But I think people just, again, need to be very niche specific and then find a model that works for them. What do they actually enjoy doing? They like to be in front of people or whatnot, and then decide which one kind of works better that way. But I'll end with this. Um, there's no greater thing than monthly recurring revenue, like MRR. Uh, agencies, if you do your job well, give you monthly recurring revenue. If you're just selling one-off courses or consulting, um, you're essentially a dancing bear, which means when the bear stops dancing, you stop getting paid. So you want to think about also financial models that are going to serve you longer term if you're actually looking to build a business that way. And it sounds like you've managed to, yeah, work out a situation where you've kind of got the best of, uh, of both worlds there. Both you worlds. Get to build the agency, get to be selective about your clients. Uh, that's really cool. And, and, but you still, I, I love being dancing, a dancing bear as well. Occasionally, it's just fun yeah. to dance. You know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if, if, if every time I dance, I get paid, I'll keep dancing. Yeah. Um, but and I just don't want that to be the only way that I get paid. Cause if I get tired for a week and don't want to dance, then there's still got to be something that's coming in. And your mentality about being in the trenches, that's why we, we have you speak. Like, we only have people speak who are still in the trenches, still have their hands. Right on the machine because that's that, that you know that's the audience that we're really going for as well so and i, and I really appreciate that about you guys because man I, I and again not talking trash about anybody but like i see these guru experts who don't consult and don't have an agency they're professional speakers yep and they're known as gurus in certain spaces it just doesn't make sense to me but that was my 10 second rant on on that uh, we have a lot of these people coming to us and saying okay how can i help cross sell your stuff because they're, they're sort of like they've sold to a point of like hey you can build an online business and for you for from your nine to five and all these things, but then they don't have the goods to actually uh, walk people through how to actually do that. If they're good yeah. at selling, the tree, but not the, uh, the schematic on how to do it. So yeah, uh, there's so yeah. much I, I want to talk to you about, but I, I, one of the things that I, uh, that I really enjoyed was a post that you put up uh, a little bit, uh, probably about a month ago on your okay. page about body hack and sort of being really um, cognizant of, of what you're putting in your body, what you're doing with your body. I, and, and I really enjoyed uh, the approach that you took with it, which was like, you know, just incremental changes to your life yeah. as an entrepreneur. Incremental things that you can do can make the biggest difference. You don't have to become a CrossFit fanatic. You don't have to go 100% keto. So just talk a little bit about that post, the impetus from it, and uh, and kind of, what, yeah, how you view it. No, I, well, yeah, no, I appreciate that a lot um, because, like, health is something that I take very seriously now, especially because I lost my father in 2005, and that just, like, weighs on me even to this day. Like, he's he never got to meet my wife. He never got to meet his grandchildren, and he never will. Um, so when I lost dad in 2005, I'm like, I'm I, not, not against him and not blaming him, but I'm just like, I'm going to be here for my grandchildren. I'm going to see my daughter and my son get married. Like, I'm, I'm going to keep rolling jujitsu, and I'm going to whoop all their asses until I'm 80. Like, that's just... That's my plan. Um, and so health was always something that was important to me, but I was always like a trend chaser, right? Now, I'm not going to call out any specific trends because some of my friends are the leaders of these trends, but it was like, oh, I hear I got to do that. Oh, cool. Okay, let, let's dive on that. And then, oh, I got to do, oh, and a ketogenic. Of course, that's the only way to go. And so all of this, and I, I started chasing trends before I realized that, um, especially as an entrepreneur where we have like, like, 
and I say this with reverence, but we have like a level of like ADD type thing where all we see is squirrels. Um, we are addicted to information. I call it infobesity. We are addicted to information where there's too much information input and like not enough execution output. And so we just end up being these like overweight, too much information and then throttled because we're overwhelmed and we don't know what to do with all this information. So um, my biggest year, and this is the, this will be the segue, but my biggest, most profitable year of my life was the year I did an information fast, which essentially meant for an entire year, um, no books, no podcasts, no, no courses, no events, no masterminds, no nothing um, for an entire year. And the focus of that year was then how do I implement everything that I've learned up until this date? And most profitable year of my life, best year of my life. Um, now I have a limited, what I call a, a like a, a limited information diet. I don't block it all out. I pick the good ones. But then when I pick the good ones, the focus is on execution and implementation. It's not just consume, consume, consume. Yeah. So I figured that's that's actually true of every area of my life, including health. Like I was just like reading this, doing that, trying this, et cetera, et cetera, getting this head full of information on what to do with my health and then realizing – you know what? We all know how to get healthy. Like there's some basic fundamentals that we all know to be true that don't have to be tied up in a course somewhere, some program or whatnot. So essentially long short of it is I met a doctor who ran some serious tests on me just to establish a baseline. Like this is where I am. And then based on that, I prescribed some very simple, easy daily things that I could do, not taking 400 supplements, not working out 10 hours a day, you know, not cutting out all my carbs and all this other craziness, but simple things that I knew I could commit to, which was important for me as an entrepreneur who have commitment issues. Cause we're always just, you know, flinging for the next thing. Um, and yeah, small incremental fundamental changes is what actually led to me being in the best shape of my life. Like I get tests done every 90 days. I'm like, I feel like I'm superhuman and operating at superhuman levels right now. My brain has never been so clear of fog and being able to like trigger and be productive and think and, and like get stuff done. I have two young kids at home and it's important me to stay healthy. Uh, so my daughter is two and a half and my son is one. Oh, cool. Um, so you're in the trenches. So Oh yeah, we're oh yeah. It's 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 the hard nights. Sometimes the one year old doesn't sleep, and uh, my daughter's in in Montessori, so she comes home with a cold every so often. We had to deal with that. Like it's just it's it's normal parenting stuff. But Montessori um, children are germier. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> I, I can't say that. I can't say that on record. <laughs> my daughter, but being my first kid, I'm being my first kid. I just I never realized like going to school, you see all these other kids. And you're going to come back with something. Um, I just didn't realize that that to be true. And then until they build their bloody immune systems, they're sick almost every day. Yeah. Um, We're just, yeah, it was those this, this summer with my, or this, this school year, my daughters went to kindergarten, but it's only a 10, it's a smaller class, like a Montessori style. So it's only yeah. 10 kids. And I swear she's less sick. I think just being five is a big deal. Oh, you get oh, less, okay. Okay. But there's yeah. a little less germ heads actions going on, so she's been been healthier this year. Yeah, so no, I, that's 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 probably true. But but yeah, the the case in point is, I think that's applicable to like to everything we do. It's a let's go back to the fundamentals. Like, there's too much like tip and trick hacking that's attempting to go on here, um, and the tip and trick is not going to build your business. It might create a few transactions, but it's not going to build your business. So fundamentals is key. And then, as you already alluded to, Eric, like incremental things that you know you could commit to because the change comes from the consistent activity over time and so many times i just see like oh i'm going to be a facebook guy and they start facebook ads and they hit a wall after like three months and they're like oh well facebook's algorithm is too hard to figure out and so i'm going to move on to something else and oh man well darn it that didn't work out let's try a different business endeavor and, and there's just stick to the fundamentals incremental activity over time is what actually compounds into real results uh, and I think so many people would just be far better off in their health, in their finances, in their business, in their Facebook endeavors. I know we're talking about that. Um, if they just stuck to those two simple principles. Amazing. Now, if, if not not Facebook, but what's a tool that you can't live without? What's, a, what's an external software tool that really helps with your business? Oh, good. Uh, so there's a tool called Station, but that's that's kind of cheating because Station is a software that amalgamates all your like productivity tools in one. So I've got like Asana in there, Trello in there, Gmail in there, um, got a ClickUp in there, a Journal in there, 
me just look over what else am it's I like missing? It's got my Voxer in there. It's got WhatsApp in there. So it's like one fundamental, I dedicate one of my computer screens for station, uh, station.io, I believe. Um, and it's this, this thing that houses everything. So you don't need to have 400 million apps open and doing all that. It's kind of a cheat of an answer because that's where I put everything into and let it kind of run things. Um, but I dig it. It just, it, it helped me just stay focused on the thing and whatever it is, uh, rather than again, having like 14 or 15 or 22 different tabs open on, uh, on Chrome. Nice. Okay, well, we're, we're towards the end here, so let's wrap up. Let's talk a little bit about San Diego. I'm just getting, yeah. you, know, I, I, you know, we basically, you know, we've been running these events. I've been saying this, you know, on and off, but uh, we've been running these events for two years now. This We just ran our fifth event, and it was our first time coming to North so America. Good. We've been in Europe, we've been in Asia, and the response there had been always amazing, but to but to meet a bunch of, like, you know, 250 new, new people who came to our show, mm. the passion that they were approaching things with, the... The, the, you know, how thrilled they were to have an event like we were providing that was so tactical. It just got me so right. jazzed up for, for what, what we're going to accomplish this year with all our different U.S. shows, especially. Uh, and then be, you know, speakers like you on board, you and, and Larry Kim, <laughs> runners. Uh, I'm just super jacked about it. What are your thoughts about, uh, about San Diego? Well, I, I'm stoked because again, like uh, seeing what you guys are doing. And again, there's there's a lot of like higher level conferences, if you want to call them that, who are just talking about like stuff up here and they're like, okay, go figure out the rest. And then there's like what you guys do, which is like, let's just bring people who are really doing it and somehow convince them to spill the beans on exactly how they're doing it. So you don't leave guessing. And I think that is the Achilles heel for most entrepreneurs is when you leave them to figure stuff out on their own, then life gets in the way and business gets in the way and nothing ever gets done. And then you go to an event like this, where it's, this is exactly what I'm doing. This is the tactical elements that are happening. These are the buttons I'm pushing to get this kind of result. Now you go do it. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually a really breath of fresh air to see that. Cause like oftentimes when I go to events, I do got to keep it a little higher level. Um, we can't dive into the trenches, uh, to get into the weeds of what's really happening. Um, but this one, like, we're just, we're just going to go and we're going to show what we're doing and how we're doing it. And, um, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, if you're an agent, see how to get agency clients with Facebook because we were very good at that. But the beautiful thing is the system that we have built, and I'm just going to unveil the system. Um, again, we've used it to sell melatonin products. We've used it to sell uh, high ticket $100,000 masterminds. We've used it to use to get people into the door for chiropractic clinics and law firms and all that. And we've used it to fill our agency in the early days. So um, I'm super stoked. We're just going to kind of like, uh, you know, open up Pandora's box a little bit and, and show the inner workings of how that all happens. And hopefully somebody, at least one person is going to take that and run with it and then tell us about, Hey, look, it works. And I'm getting clients and I have a real business now, or I'm selling my products and I wasn't able to do that before, which is really the biggest win for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to hang out. The, uh, the speaker's dinner is going to be fantastic that first night. We're going to do a speaker's dinner each night. You're, you're going to come to the, to the first one there. Just an opportunity to awesome. network. The, you know, the, the, we, do this, we do this thing called mentorship hour. It was called like a networking hour. But really, it just ended up being, hey, the speakers go out for a little while and everyone kind of crowds around them. And, uh, and really, it's town just direct grilling about about what they you know what what these entrepreneurs might need help with but it just created this incredible vibe the, the whole time we're doing it you know in a non-standard location we've got this one is going to be uh at uh park nightclub which is where cardi b performs when she's there just so you know you're gonna be on the same thing. get out of here i didn't even realize that. Gonna, and then we have all these networking areas uh laid out it's going to be a really really interesting thing again it's intimate as you know with 300 people it's going to be an intimate experience for people uh and yeah i can't wait I'm going to have to bring my Cardi B outfit then. You might have to bring your Cardi B out. That's fantastic. And then, and then, yeah, I'm going to be in Toronto soon too. So hopefully we can connect when I, when I'm there. Well, please don't come uh, anytime in the next week, No, but uh, and <laughs> you're going to miss your Victoria weather, but anytime after that, uh, it's a, it's a beautiful city. Can't right. wait. Yeah. When you're here, let's definitely connect. I'm just trying to see if there's any questions. We have a lot of comments, which is great. A lot of people saying, what up, Nick? Do we have a room block established anywhere? I think Veronica can maybe uh, talk to that a little bit. We had one question. No, about... no questions. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. Like how, uh, how do you decide on charging a flat retainer or working off a percentage of ad spend? Right. As that question came up, you kind of addressed it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to go into that a little bit more. 
it, so I, I just believe the question, the, the answer to that is, um, so if you just prefer stability, um, I would go with a retainer. That's how we started. Cause I was like, Oh God, I don't know. But if I know if I have five clients that are paying six grand each, I know what that means. Right. Or 10 clients that pay 10. Here's the thing, 10 clients that pay you eight grand a month is a million dollar business. That's how I built the first million dollar agency in less than a year was 10 clients who paid 10 grand a month. Now there's something to say about how do you get a $10,000 a month client, but regardless, break that up, make it 20 clients at five grand a month, right? Or four grand or whatever. It's the same thing. So do you, it's your temperament. Do, would you prefer stability or would you prefer a little bit of a challenge to get a percentage of something? Um, I don't think there's a right answer there. It's what's right for you. Nice. Uh, the contrast, what is this? The contrast between photo advice and lead generation techniques from Nicholas changed my business and copywriting skills forever. Hot damn it. Yeah, well, great. Thank you. I, but here, kudos, kudos, kudos to whoever who said that because when I hear something like that, what it really means is someone took advice and applied it. Exactly. Right? So I'm, I'm, I'm nothing special. I just deliver the message. But for the people who do something with it and get a result, God, you're the hero in that. So thank you for actually doing something with it. That stuff lights me up. Very cool. Okay. Well, I think that's it for questions, but this is going to live on the live streams. We're going to release it as a podcast. So uh, Nick, if you're able Wait. to kind of check this post uh, every now and then, and, and if, uh, if people have questions, maybe you can answer them directly in the hundred uh, percent. Am I tagged in it or something? I'll be able to find it. Yeah. For sure. Actually, awesome. I think you are, but awesome. we'll, I'll, I'll invite you right in there. Uh, but thanks awesome. so much for yeah. doing this today. It was a lot of fun. No, it was uh, tons of fun. I appreciate it. And everybody, if you haven't got your ticket yet, go out and get your damn ticket so we can spend some time together at Cardi B's nightclub and talk some Facebook advertising because I'm super stoked about that. But I uh, honestly, Eric, I'm, I'm stoked to be there. I'm really very much looking forward to it. And I think uh, we're going to have a great time. So thanks for the invite. Awesome, man. We'll see you there. All right. See you later. Bye.